Hello, Dr. Goodwin. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? This is Blair Job. Yes, it's great speaking to you this morning. Um, I'm going to start by introducing you to my Health Power audience. Um, and in doing so, I would note that cancer of the esophagus is the fastest rising type of cancer in the country. Um, if you have frequent heartburn, that's anyone who has frequent heartburn, you may be at risk for a condition that can double your chances of developing cancer, namely esophage esophageal cancer. So joining us today during Esophageal Cancer Awareness Month are you, Dr. Blair Job, Director of the Esophageal and Lung Institute of Allegheny and Clinical Professor at Temple University. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Goodwin. It's, a, it's okay. an honor. Okay. Okay. Now tell me, Dr. Job, how, uh, why is esophageal cancer on the rise? Yeah, we, we, you know, it, and it, this hasn't happened overnight. Um, in fact, um, esophageal cancer has increased by over 500% since 1970. Um, and the reasons for it aren't entirely clear, but we think it's linked, linked to the obesity epidemic. Uh -huh. when, when one is obese, you know, they're Im they can be, uh, have a reduction in, their, in the effectiveness of their immune system. And we know the immune system is critical in protecting one from cancer. That's very interesting. Uh, I would have thought also, it, it, does it relate to alcohol intake or not necessarily? Yeah, you know, the, the one we really see a link to is with uh, tobacco. Um, tobacco. Yeah, tobacco use, um, as well as chronic reflux disease. Uh, being male is, a, is, a, is one. Um, and, uh, there, you know, there is a family history component as well particularly in first order relatives, like, as there is in breast cancer. Okay. Now, why don't you say a little bit more about chronic re reflux disease? I think mm -hmm. most people know of it as heartburn. Yes, exactly. So, um, and for the sake of our discussion, I'll just keep calling it heartburn. But yes. what it is, is um, in 90% of the cases, uh, it's the, cause, the cause of it is a defect or a dysfunction of the lower, the specialized muscle that lives between the esophagus and stomach. Let me ask you one uh -huh. thing. You and I keep referring to the esophagus, and of course, some some in the lay audience yeah. don't know that. Would we call the esophagus the upper gastrointestinal tract? Yeah, I think I, I think I would call the esophagus the swallowing tube. So it's really that uh, muscular tube that links the mouth to the stomach. Okay. And um, so right between the esophagus and stomach is a specialized muscle. And that muscle becomes broken for reasons that are poorly understood. And that leads to the state of chronic reflux disease. Okay. Um, and then um, what usually happens is patients will get put on acid suppression medication, or they'll put themselves on it now that it's widely available over the counter. This is things like, these are things like, um, you know, Protonix, Nexium, Prilosec, um, you know, all those different brands of medications are of the same ilk. They're all uh, brothers or sisters. Um, uh, let me ask you one mm -hmm. other thing. When yeah. you say chronic reflux disease, uh, GERD is another term used for it. Uh, what symptoms uh, are common? Yeah, so the primary symptom is heartburn, which is the burning underneath the breastbone. Okay. Um, and then um, other symptoms of reflux are difficulty swallowing um, or regurgitation, which is the actual movement of fluid from the stomach up to the mouth. Okay. That's, that's helpful. Mm hmm Okay. Mm -hmm. And you were, you were going to tell me, why, why is it on the rise? you think it's uh, related to Im immune mechanisms? Yeah, and, and I think obesity is a big factor. Because uh, it's, it's the, the increase in incidence has really paralleled uh, the uh, obesity, uh, rise in obesity uh, throughout our nation. Okay. And, and the risk factors, well, I guess obesity, then you would say, is one of the main risk factors. Yeah, well, the specific risk, can risk factors for um, esophageal cancer include being uh, male, uh, tobacco use, uh, obesity, um, Barrett's esophagus and hiatal hernia, 
which is the movement of the stomach into the chest. Okay. And uh, what, what diagnosis? How is it diagnosed? It's um, diagnosed usually with, uh, there's a whole host of uh, technologies that are available to us now uh, that we can uh, use to diagnose A, gastroesophageal reflux disease, and then the diagnosis of esophageal cancer in Barrett's is done with an endoscope. So that's a lighted camera that's put through the mouth when the patient is sedated. And then we can examine the entire lining of that tube um, and make sure that there's nothing serious going on. Okay, and uh, what, what, what is done to decrease the incidence of uh, heartburn? Um, I, well, I, I think um, one of, you know, 20% of America is experiencing at least, at least one symptom a week that requires therapy. So, oh, really? Yeah, so we're talking millions of people. Um, so, and, and, and that's part of the reason that the, the uh, medication business, that business is a $7 billion business mm -hmm. per year. So it's pretty, it's pretty uh, it lets you know that, you know, these medications are in high demand and, and they have some effectiveness but they do not prevent cancer. Okay, that's one out of five, when you say, about 20%? Yeah, about 20% have symptoms at least once a week that require some form of therapy. Mm-hmm, okay. Uh, but, but it does not, if it turns out to be uh, chronic reflux, the medications don't cure it, obviously. That's correct. But you can have surgery to fix that valve, you know, the the sphincter or the broken muscle there, you can have surgery to repair that. And uh, that's highly effective. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of options. I mean, just to help, uh, you know, bring it in, bring it into a little bit more, uh, bring it in so that it's a manageable bit of information because we have thrown a lot of information at your, at your uh, viewership. But I think um, really reflux, very common. Esophageal cancer is pretty rare, um, but they are linked. So it's important. Oh, to I see. The, yeah. the esophageal cancer. I understood you to say also esophageal cancer is increasing markedly. It has. It has. But uh, that's in the incidence rate of it. The prevalence rate, so that is the total number of cases per year, is actually mm -hmm. by, by margin compared to breast or colon cancer or uterine cancer, much, much smaller. And so part of it, part of that has led to our inability uh, to get enough recognition for what this, what we call an orphan cancer. Okay. And so uh, it's important that primary care physicians also know, uh, and patients know, that if they're having chronic reflux, they need to talk to their physician about the possibility of having the disorder. You're exactly right. That's it. Okay. And where can people find more information about chronic reflux, mm -hmm. GERD? We didn't mention Barrett's esophagus. Yeah. Uh, so what is Barrett's? Yeah, why don't we talk about that just a second. So what, what uh, happens is in the state of chronic inflammation from reflux, the, esoph yes. the esophagus says, okay, you're going to treat me like stomach, I'm going to become more like stomach. So it changes the lining uh, to become uh, protective of the esophagus. The problem is, is now the patient can't feel heartburn anymore because of the Barrett's, and now the Barrett's is at risk for progression from chronic inflammation that goes unchecked. I see. So therefore, uh, one thing is, is, is possibly having an effect on the other. Exactly right. Okay. And where can one get more information about the GERD, the reflux, mm -hmm. the Barrett's? Yeah, um, esophageal cancer. Yeah, they can go to refluxprogression.com. Reflux. Just, just what I say, refluxprogression.com. Yeah, and okay. on there is a whole host of great information, as well as um, doctors in their general area who, who uh, could help them with issues related to GERD, Barrett's, or, or hopefully not, but esophageal cancer. Right, okay, well, that was very helpful information. I enjoyed talking with you, and I'm glad we had an opportunity to share this information with the Health Power. I should have asked you one thing, because Health Power especially focuses on um, minorities. Is there any relationship to race or ethnicity and this? Yeah, it, yeah um, this 
form of GERD-related esophageal adenocarcinoma can affect anyone, but okay. we, we tend to see it more in men and more in white men. But, That's interesting. Yeah. So, but there's another form of esophageal cancer that is seen more in African-American men. Okay. Well, we won't, we won't go into that today, mm -hmm. but at another time we may get a chance to discuss that. Well, I hope to visit with you some, sometime soon. And uh, Dr. Goodwin, thank you for the opportunity to highlight Esophageal uh, Cancer Awareness Month. It's, it's been an honor. Right, same here. I enjoyed it very much. Me too. So long. Have a good day. Okay, bye-bye.